Well, thank you for joining me today. This is Rivka with Treasures of Glory. This is Prayer Team episode number 35. This episode is titled Gentleness, Greatness for Warfare. And this continues to tie into what we've been talking about since episode one, Satanic Ritual Abuse, why we need to know about this with the theme tying it together. It's about the children. This is a live recording of the prayer call on Thursday, January 21st, 2021. And we're going to continue with what's going on in our nation and world with the cleaning up of the um, cabal, the deep state, and those that are perpetrating crimes against humanity. We've had a lot going on. We just recently had um, a lot of this stuff going on with the inauguration of um, Joe Biden. And we are actually in a, in a military state right now. So there's more to that. I'm not going to go into that right now. But as we are going to be praying, we're going to be shifting our focus to um, praying for the military at this point instead of the um, the military over what's happening because they're the ones that are now in um, the control of the government. And um, maybe I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but for right now, that's who we're going to be focusing on as those in leadership of our nation here in the United States of America. And I am going to open us up in a word of prayer. And our prayer team is based on Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, where it is written, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And so this verse is really important as this verse is um, shows step by step of what we need to put into action. This verse is more than just a verse to pray. This is when to live out in our daily lives and the things that we do on these calls are parts of that and putting that into place as well as um, afterwards putting things that we've been doing into place day to day after we've been praying. So let me open this in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We praise you and give you the glory. I speak the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, over our households, bank accounts, businesses, ministries, and everything under our stewardship in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. We plead the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, over President Trump and his family and all those who are appointed to govern alongside him in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. We also pray and plead the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, over our military. We pray and put on the full armor of God, which is the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith that extinguishes the flaming darts of the wicked one, taking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, taking up the garments of vengeance and the cloak of zeal, having the Lord as our shield and the glory of the Lord as our rear guard. We pray that every curse, hex, vex, spell, incantation, form of witchcraft, voodoo, dark art, or other form of weaponized demonic activity are reversed and sent against the hence of against the heads of the sender sevenfold that they would know that Yeshua Jesus is Lord. We declare that every human spirit, hybrid spirit, AI, demonic spirit, synthetic spirit, or spirit child on assignment to create distraction, confusion, or the triggering of bombs, booby traps, tripwires, or other types of programming are now discovered and bound in chains and fetters of iron and put to wherever the true Lord Jesus Christ sends them. We thank you that there is martial law instituted on all parts of those listening on their humanity, attempting to go out of body and engage in astral traffic and trade that is ungodly and unauthorized. We thank you, Holy Spirit of truth, to guide us into all truth. And we call this time blessed and fruitful in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking more about the fruit of the Holy Spirit of spiritual warfare. And this uh, is based on Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And what we want to do in looking at the fruit of the Holy Spirit is we want to have the um, good that the Lord has in his nature, in his character, in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. There are many different things that we can use for spiritual warfare. In addition to the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we have the armor, we have truth, we have wisdom. And all of those things are absolutely wonderful to be doing. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit is one of the aspects that we can look at for warfare. And tonight we're going to be talking in the context of gentleness. Not sure what happened to all my slides. Um, okay, well, apparently a couple of them got deleted. And so I'm sorry about 
from that. I'm not sure what happened, but um, I'm just going to go from here. And all right. So, okay. Our, our verse tonight that we're going to be focusing on about um, our, our topic tonight is gentleness is greatness in warfare. And we're going to come first, I'm going to talk to us a little bit about the definition of gentleness. The words translated um, from Greek and Hebrew into gentleness, both Greek and Hebrew have the meaning humility and meekness. And Webster's defines humility as humble, not proud, haughty, arrogant, or assertive. And what we're going to be talking about is gentleness uh, as far as spiritual warfare and how it works with greatness. And so in Psalm 18, verse 35, it is written, you have also held, you've also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. And this Psalm is also in second Samuel chapter 22, verse 36, where it is written, you have also given me the shield of your salvation and your gentleness has made me great. And so I want to point out this definition for the word great that is translated from Hebrew. Um, but the, the word in Hebrew has the meaning of be or become great, be or become many, be or become much, be or become numerous, to make much, make many, have many, to increase greatly or exceedingly, to make great, enlarge, do much. And so when we are looking at um, gentleness and greatness, not only does King David say this about, he's talking about the Lord's gentleness has made him great. And this is in chapter 35. This was after he had won a victory against King Saul. And the, the context of the chapter has to do with, um, in, in, the, in the aspect of warfare. And um, we're going to, I'm going to just read the whole Psalm just because it's, it's a long one. But it really is um, very descriptive of the warfare, of what's going on, what we're needing right now. There, we're going to be in a sustained battle for a while with this. We don't exactly know how long it's going to take. And since we do not know, we want to make sure, too, that we have um, as much going on of what we do understand and we do know we can look to the word of God for his faithfulness. We can look for encouragement and strength, and we can keep renewing and replenishing that so that we can have what we need for warfare. And, and with the warfare of what's going on against um, removing of the stuff with the deep state and the cabal, we've talked in previous episodes where um, we've been repenting and praying, re leading to the various gods that are being worshipped that are part of these um, crimes against humanities and these rituals and the sacrifices that are being done and the children that they are using as well as also um, uh, adults as well in these and that we are still contending for this to be brought to justice. And we talked last time in episode 34 about goodness and justice. Um, but we need to have everything that we can in order to have greatness and warfare. And we need to have this humility. And I'm not going to go into this now, um, but there are other verses about how the Lord um, takes down the pride, proud and he exalts the humble. So there's more than just this one verse about being made great and how gentleness connects with that. Um, there are a lot of verses with um, humility and like the one that says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up. And there's more to that, but we can definitely, that verse, but we, there's a theme about humility and greatness throughout scripture. It's important with intercessory prayer and spiritual warfare to keep balanced in the midst of dealing with these deep issues. So we need to make sure that we're ministering to and caring for our spirit, soul, and body. It is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. I offer resources on treasures of glory for ministering to the human spirit, soul, and body. In ministering to the human spirit, I have spirit-to-spirit blessings, love, joy, peace, as part of the Fruit of the Holy Spirit, a spiritual warfare series. I also have a series of CDs on exceeding joy blessings. Resources that minister to the soul include the series of the Fruit of the Holy Spirit is Spiritual Warfare. In addition, I also have the books on Keeping Covenant with the Lord and the Seven Mountains of Culture, so Covenant and Religion, which is what these prayers are coming from, and also Covenant and Family. I also have resources with Treasured Wellness 365 consultations that minister to the body. And so these work at the quantum level in the body for it to be able to release toxins and pathogens. And you can see from my testimonial video on how this has benefited me. I have links to these in the description box below. Thank you for supporting this prayer team through prayer and financial contributions. The link for contributions is in the description box below. So I am going to open this up. And this is from the King James Version. I'm sorry, the New King James Version. Um, number Psalm 28. And I just want to speak this out also as encouragement, also as a word of blessing um, over, over, over our nation, over our world, as many of us are feeling the effects of what's going on. And um, it's a nation, I mean, a worldwide war that we're in in battle against the um, enemies of, of darkness. So this is Psalm chapter 18. It is written, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so that I shall be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surround me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken. Because he was angry, Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed down the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. Nor has he hidden his face from him, but when he cries to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. Sorry, I turned to Mintages there. Okay, a couple verses were too many. But I'm going to go back. So it's with merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. 
For by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer, and he sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of fronds. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarge my path under me so that my feet do not slip. I have pursued my enemies and have overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again until they were destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine dust before the wind. I cast them like dirt in the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. As a people that I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies and also lifts me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Great deliver deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. So I would like this to just be an encouragement. And we can see from this um, context here of the verse um, where um, David says that your gentleness has made me great is in context of the battle and um, in the context of the battle and having the strength to run against a troop and to leap over walls and to continue until everyone is brought to justice. And again, it talks about the Lord is the one who is um, one who avenges. And so we want to make sure that whatever we do, we do um, according to the rule of law and prayer and allow those who are in authority um, for doing the actual warfare and battle um, that have that with military as far as physically, that that needs to be done through the rule of law. And we can pray for um, the military, we can pray for the rule of law and for justice. So this is about goodness or gentleness is warfare. It, it's um, coming in opposite spirit of pride and worshiping false gods. So when we're um, being humble with God, um, we're worshiping him and we're not prideful. And we want to definitely make sure that it's, it's not just about not being prideful because not being prideful doesn't give us any leverage over the pride of the enemy that's coming against us. If there are people who are acting in pride and they are acting in great number of pride, like if you put it on a number scale, um, you know, if someone's operating at like 50, 100, 1,000, whatever points of pride, if we eliminate pride out of our life, we're at zero, we don't have any leverage to overcome the pride that is coming and the arrogance and the evil that is happening with that. So in order to do with what Romans 12, 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How do we overcome evil with good? If people are operating at such high levels of pride. We need to be operating at at least that amount in the humility, if not more to actually, because we, we actually have to have more of the humility to be able to counter the negative of what is happening with the pride. And it's really important that we act in humility, that we really understand that um, gentleness works really well, hand in hand with goodness. We talked about goodness last week and the connection with justice. And Micah 6 say, says, what is good, O oh man? What has the Lord required of thee but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God?
So part of goodness is also humility. So gentleness and humility are going to go hand in hand. And the importance of gentleness is effective in warfare, but gentleness is also essential and a key and vital point for justice to be come about. So these also are working and overlapping with each other and they build on each other because it's really hard to take any of the fruit of the spirit out and have it be standalone and not overlap with the others. And um, I also wanted to share the importance of tying gentleness into the principles of warfare. And there are 11 principles of war. And those principles are when the objective, we've talked about the objective in previous um, calls and prayer letters, the objective is victory. Number two is offensive, the offensive. Number three is concentration, four is mobility, five is security, six is surprise, seven is cooperation, eight is communication, nine is economy of force, 10 is pursuit, and 11 is obedience. When I had um, was working on the fruit of the Holy Spirit, spiritual warfare, a pastor talked to me about this book, Principles of War, Thoughts on Strategic Evangelism by Jim Wilson. And this is a really good book with warfare um, and, and, and evangelism. Um, it also works really well, too, with spiritual warfare. And um, this, the, the author of this is Retired Military. So he is bringing in military expertise in this. And when this pastor was showing me these different um, objectives or the different principles here, when he hit on one of them, I knew that that was the element or the one for the principle for gentleness. And I want to talk about that, but I want to um, mention some stuff first about meekness. And we know with, with Jesus, Yeshua, when he... Um, drove out the money changers in the temple um, that day. Um, when he looked, he, scripture says that he looked the day before and he looked around and it was the next day when he went there that he cleared out and he got the whip and he was um, turning over tables. And uh, we also know from scripture that Jesus only did what his father saw what he saw his father doing that act in for taking out the money changers that is um, in mark chapter 11 he he was very purposed on it it wasn't a spur of the moment he wasn't just acting out of a lack of self-control or out of pride and he was um, acting out of what he saw his father doing, and it's written in John 5, 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do for what he does, the son also does in like manner. And when Jesus is um, an example of meekness, not only him, but, but of Moses, and the meekness and gentleness and humility all go together. And with that, if, if the enemy knew exactly what was going to happen when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, um, the enemy probably would not have done that. Um, and the thing with Jesus being meek, people would not have expected the strength that he had. And um, here's a quote. I don't know how to say this person's name. Um, so, but it's E V A G R I O S, Eva Grios, the solitary. He wrote, There is scarcely any other virtue which the demons fear as much as gentleness. And it's because of the humility and the greatness that is in that. Now, the principle of warfare that I see gentleness coming under is the one for surprise. Because when somebody is humble and they're meek, but there is a greatness and a power to it. Somebody can be humble, meek, um, kind of unassuming. But when they, when somebody understands who the one true God is, 
lives in humility from that aspect. And there's no pride. There's nothing that is there that is necessarily showing the enemy because the enemy is going to see this as, oh, I can take advantage or I can do <laughs> these different things. And um, it, it, it over the enemy then overplays the hand. But when the enemy overplays their hand against somebody who is gentle, because of the humility and being in right standing with God, there is an authority and there is a justice and there is um, the power of God can work through that in absolutely amazing ways. And that is because when living in humility, there is an ability for the Lord to exalt. And we know that it was Lucifer's, Lucifer fell because of the pride in his trading and the different things. He wanted to exalt himself over the one true God. And when we exalt the one true God and he lives in and through us, we can be very effective in warfare. And this is not, this is to be effective in warfare in our lives personally, as well as, um, but when, as well as for other people. Because when we are in warfare and we get victory in our lives, the purpose is so that we can then extend that out. We need to be about bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth and engaging in spiritual warfare through the gentleness, meekness, and humility of the Lord and allowing him to make us great. He will be able to give us the strength that we need in the warfare, in this battle. And we need as much of the nature and character of God in us so that we can overcome evil with good and that we can pray in agreement along the aspects of justice because we, we want and need to be a part of bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth for the crimes against humanity to be brought to justice for our earth to be healed, for our land to be healed, for the healing of um, all of those who have been the recipients of the atrocities that have been done against them for crimes against humanity. So I just want to encourage you, God is good. He has all the resources that are needed to be able to overcome and to be victorious. I am going to Close us in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to follow with a blessing for um, for each one of you that are listening, and want to speak a blessing over um, over those who are working in our nation and world, and um, in the Milky Way for bringing um, justice for those um, who to bring justice to those who have been committing crimes against humanity. All right, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come in to you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And we praise you and thank you that you are almighty and the Lord of the armies of angels. We thank you for the covenant that you have with us. And this is available to us through the death and resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We have access to all the provisions of this covenant. We thank you that the blood of Jesus atones for all our sins, rebellion, and iniquity. We recognize that we have sinned by not fully understanding your gentleness, humility, and meekness, and how it pertains to you making us great in warfare. We have not been living fully from your gentleness, neither have we been operating according to the fullness of your gentleness on behalf of others. As members of the royal priesthood, we take responsibility for and repent on behalf of ourselves, our generations, and our nation, and humanity for not seeking living from your nature of gentleness in respect to warfare to the fullest extent of what is available in our lives, as well as for those who have been and are currently being subjugated to crimes against humanity. We repent of this and ask for your forgiveness. We also renounce agreement with pride, the enemy's counterpart to gentleness, and we seek humility and meekness. We do not agree with and renounce the injustice of the child S-A-C-R-I-F-I-C-E-S's and all evil rituals that are performed in worship to false gods. We repent on behalf of ourselves, our generations, our nation, and all humanity for turning a blind eye to the worship of these false gods and allowing pride to continue as long as it has. 
We declare that you are the only one true God. We choose to embrace gentleness, meekness, and humility that come from you. It is written in Matthew 18, 18, as spoken by Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We bind the injustice that includes allowing the crimes against humanity to continue. We lose the goodness and justice of the one true God. We speak gentleness, humility, and meekness in order that you can make us great in warfare for protection over our children and in order that there's a purging of the crimes that are being committed against humanity. Father, please protect our military and all those who are involved in stopping the worship and this injustice. And we thank you for those who are working to rescue the children in our world and beyond. It is written in 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. We lose the spirit of peace, the spirit of love, the spirit of truth, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind over our nation and world. Please fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Please wash us with the water from the river of life that comes from your throne. We pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please guide us into all light that we may be about your work here on earth. Please arm us with strength to live out the fullness of who you created us to be in you. Please give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you that you are more, that in you we are more than conquerors. We thank you for the victory, and we pray this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now for the blessing. Beloved, I call your spirit to attention. I'm excited to speak to you today. You are created in the image of the Most High God. He is the King of glory. He is the Lord of hosts. Your Lord is strong and mighty in battle. As his beloved son or daughter, the king of glory provides you with everything you need in battle, beginning with training on through to complete victory in your life. To complete victory in your life over Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Beloved, hear the word of the Lord for you. It is written in Psalm 18, verse 33. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. And in Psalm 1835, it is written, your gentleness has made me great. Beloved, the word for how in Hebrew is derived from a word which means to be hard, be severe, be fierce, and be harsh. The word for bronze means from the red color of the throat of a serpent. The throat of a serpent can only be seen when looking directly at it with its mouth open and ready to strike the victim. This Hebrew word comes from bronze, which is a word that is the same word used for the serpent that deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. Beloved, the Lord trains your hands to make war to break Satan's hard, severe, fierce, and harsh warfare directed straight at you. I bless you with the gentleness of the Lord that makes you great in warfare. I bless you to fight from your identity imparted to you as a son or daughter of the Most High God. I bless you to war from the nature of God which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I bless you to no longer use any weapons from the nature of Satan that includes bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, retaliation, anger, hatred, violence, murder, jealousy, envy, self-hatred, rejection, and fear. Beloved, I ask you to turn your face to the Father and ask him to teach you how to war in order to bring down the fierce and severe attacks of the enemy that are meant to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Please ask the Father to impart his nature of gentleness to you. Beloved, I bless you with the gentleness of the Father that makes you great in all your battles against the enemy. I bless you to be confident in your God in his training and provision for you to boldly face the enemy as you bring down the direct attacks against you. And I bless you to be confident in the warfare against the enemy as we are facing this enemy in our nation and world and across the Milky Way that is perpetrating these crimes against humanity. I bless you to look to the Father and encourage you to ask him what you need, what is your role in this? How does he want you to, to um, seek justice on behalf of what's going on? How, how has he designed you during this time to be able to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth? And I bless you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus. Well, thank you for joining me today. Please click the subscribe button and click on the bell if you would like to receive notifications for future videos released. 
Please click the link below to sign up to receive our weekly prayer letter and other information about the prayer team. You can also click here for links to view other prayer team videos. And I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Shalom. Please click here for the links to view other prayer team videos. The prayer team playlist includes Satanic Ritual Abuse, Why You Need to Know About It, Portland's Recipe for Anarchy. It also includes the previous videos in this series on Covenant and Religion. So if you've missed those, I encourage you to go back to be able to see those. There's also a playlist for the Treasured Wellness 365 consultation that introduces them and the video on my testimonial of how this work has helped me. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless and shalom.